Hi, I'm Shami Galley. And I'm David Keener. And this is the Hourlings Podcast Project. Tonight, we're going to be talking about stuff that's in the news. And Dave's going to be driving the bus. Dave, take it away. All right. So one of the things that uh, hit the news about the writing field uh, fairly recently was Wired uh, did an interview with uh, Brandon Sanderson. They're a... Uh, their author spent about six months kind of researching him and going to visit him and talking to him and then wrote what is probably the, the worst um, interview of her read in my entire life. Um, so we're going to talk about that interview and why it was so bad. Um, and I'll start off with, well, uh, have you both read it? I have. Yes. Okay. So let's talk about general reactions first. Marty, what do you think? Uh, the interviewer is completely tone deaf. I don't, I don't know what the, what he was thinking. I mean, it's like, is is this the onion? Is this, you know, Babylon B? You know, screwing with uh, Brandon Sanderson? No. The guy was completely tone deaf. He had no idea about the genre, no idea about the fandom no idea about sanderson himself and i i don't i don't get it all right Shay? i was not necessarily surprised because i know that in journalism oftentimes the ne a negative piece gets more traction um i think that writers who are you know maybe a little bit green and trying to make a name for themselves in journalism tend to write a little more negatively um it's just that, you know, writing a, a praise piece about something doesn't, doesn't uh, draw the same readership or the same interest, I guess, as something that's a little more biting and a little more superior and critical. Um, and he certainly got, he certainly got buzz, didn't he? You know, over this piece. So I think got he, the you know, the of the he definitely yeah. got traffic for, for Wired, most of it negative. Um, I, I think, and someone argued that negative is fine, you know, any, any media is good media. Although I, I think they were helped out by the fact that uh, Brandon Sanderson's response to the article was very, um, was very gentle and, and basically consists of this guy didn't really understand it. He was researching an article about a topic he didn't really understand and clearly having trouble with it. He's just a regular guy. Folks, fans, just leave him alone. Yeah, just to, don't beat you up. You know, him. don't 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 dogpile this guy, which could have been yeah, easily I, happened. I, I, yeah, I thought I actually learned more about the the preconceptions and and um, negative things about the writer of the article than I did about Brandon Sanderson, and, and that was that struck me as really weird because it was more about. The writer of the article and not the subject mm -hmm. of the article um another thing that he kind of pulled out in the in the article is like brandon sanderson who's he like you know i've never heard of him um so give me your thoughts about that because i, I thought that was particularly tone deaf as well yeah how could he not hear of him he's had some of the biggest deals in the industry. I mean, just think about his Kickstarter. Um, just, you know, thinking about his media deal that he is, had, not to mention the number of bestsellers that he's had in New York Times. I mean, it's, it's just, where has this guy been living that he hasn't uh, heard any of these things? Who's Brandon Sanderson? Really? You want me to interview who? What? So, Shay, what your, your reaction? Once again, I was not surprised, and here's why. Um, I think it was very typical of just genre bias. I think that there is a general, you know, lack of respect for sci-fi and fantasy. Um, you have big shot authors who produce legal thrillers, um, who produce action, action uh, novels, and they get all sorts of attention and, and you know their their household names but i think it's i think it's pretty uh once again proper the chorus use a colloquium uh a colloquial uh that it's just 
you know, sci-fi fantasy gets snubbed a lot. They, they just they, there's not the respect there uh, as there is for other genres in the in the popular market and popular audience. Uh, I just thought the reaction was bizarre. It's like he was asked to do this interview, and he's like, "Who's Brandon Sanderson?" And he checked around the Wired office, and nobody there knew who Brandon Sanderson was. So he's like, "Who is this guy? What makes him important?" Um, and it just seems very like like for instance, I did not hear about Jay. J.K. Rowling until she had three books out. And my reaction wasn't, who the hell is J.K. Rowling? My my reaction was, oh, a lot of people really seem to like this book, these books at all ages. Maybe I'll go check out the first one. And and I did, and I, you know, I own the whole series. But don't you think there's a general, like, you know, attitude towards sci-fi and fantasy, like, that's childish, you know, that people who like sci-fi and fantasy never grew up, you know, they're not real, they're not real adults. Do you think that's like a real thing? I, I think it is true to some extent, you know, that, you know, sci-fi and fantasy have always got been the redheaded stepchildren of, uh, of genres. So mm -hmm. there, there's a lot to be said for that. There's some truth to that. But at the same time, if you look in, in other fields of media, uh, I think right now all top 10 movies of all time are science fiction films or fantasy films in yep. one way or another. Sci-fi, action, adventure uh, kind. So I mean, look I, at I the just, Oscars this year. Everything, everywhere, all at once. Total sci-fi. So uh, it, it just struck me as bizarre. Uh, something else that struck me as bizarre was, you know, he, he talked about it to Sanderson uh, personally, and basically he thought Sanderson was boring and unexciting and you know so let's, so let's talk about that for a little bit about his personal reaction to sanderson i am I, so uh, sick of, of um i'm so sick of bashing members of the church of jesus christ of already sense i i just i feel like it's so first of all if you've ever met someone from from that church you know that they're really nice people most of the time they're really nice people and there was a lot of just very nasty, like, anti-Mormon, um, you know, rhetoric against them, which was just, it was just so random and weirdly hateful. I just, I, I'm sick of it, and I didn't like it. That's all I have to say about it. Yeah, I'm totally with you there. I mean, I know a lot of authors that are Mormons that are, you know, really get a lot of shit. And it's, it's probably because they're Mormon. And I felt pretty much the same way. I, like the only thing that he seemed to be able to pick up about Sanderson was that Mormonism had to, his Mormonism had to be <clears throat> infecting his writing somehow, or it was really what he was about was, you know, Sanderson wants to be your God. And, and that just seemed like something really peculiar to pick out because I really don't see that in his writing or his books that it's even about um, religion so much as, as it is about action, adventure, uh, et cetera, et cetera. I think I think his his actual quote was like he's very Mormon. Like, would you say that about anybody? Like, would you say that about? Nick, I think Nicholas Sparks is Christian. Would you say Nicholas Sparks is very Christian? Like, it's just not something you would normally say. And, and also, if it's on the if it's not on the page, it doesn't really matter. Right? right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I think part of the problem is like there's no narrative, right? You know, yeah, he's a, he's a white middle aged mm -hmm. guy. He he wasn't you know like J.K. Rowling writing the first Harry Potter novel while wondering how where his next meal was going to come from. Um, you know he didn't grow up poor and have to educate himself to to write books. He wasn't you know uh, he wasn't crippled and and overcoming something. He, you know he doesn't have you know he's a white middle aged guy who leads a boring life, but he writes exciting books. But none of that came out. It's all oh, he's he's. He's so Mormon. Well, the the writer, the interviewer, didn't even stop there. He went after the audience that reads Sanderson's books. And uh, he just, like, totally crossed over into assholery that I just was shaking my head as I was reading it. Yeah, because he, he uh, had a chance to attend uh, Dragon Steel, which is a... Um, basically a Brandon Sanderson uh, science fiction fantasy convention. 7,000 people, 7,000 fans. 
and uh, he basically insulted them and kind of looked down on them. I don't know if I, I'm trying to empathize how, how I would feel if I were Sanderson and like this guy just flew in out of nowhere, went out to eat with me, like kind of lived among me for a while. Um, like I can't imagine that. Like I, I'm a very affectionate and like you know I, I love people and I can't imagine that I wouldn't form some kind of you know bond with the person who came and spent time with me and it had took an interest in my life and then. I would be very shocked if uh, that person turned around and wrote something as negative as this person wrote. Um, I mean, I can't, and I also can't imagine being the reporter or the journalist um, and just being there the whole time, not having any sort of like feeling of warmth or, or um, connection of any kind towards this person, just looking at, looking at Sanderson like he's a, um, a bug under a microscope, basically. Uh, and then going and and you know writing this dribble about him, I, I just I, it just seems like I can't imagine that kind of heartlessness. Uh, maybe I'm being too harsh on the journalist now, but you know it just seems like it's very. And there's a reason I don't I haven't mentioned his name because we're not trying to dogpile on him. Yeah, we've no, we're not going to mention I his that. name. And I his name that. will be rapidly forgotten, to be honest. <laughs> and um, I I wonder how big the component of jealousy was. Hmm. Once he found out how successful Sanderson really was. Yeah. And uh, yeah. it's, you know. Another plank of the uh, the interview had to do with Sanderson's writing. He didn't, hmm. you know, to make a long story short, he didn't seem to like uh, Sanderson's writing, didn't think he was a good writer, didn't seem to value world building or the magic systems that, Sanderson creates or the worlds that he creates um, and he didn't seem to like Sanderson's writing ethic where he had his work ethic where he has his writing projects scheduled out for months in advance he knows what he's going to be doing for months in advance as he's got these projects and schedules he's trying to keep up thoughts the guy's I think jealous. That was... sorry go ahead Marty. oh the guy's just jealous he he probably wishes he was that organized he probably wishes that, you know, he was as successful or had that penetration and name recognition. I mean, he went to a convention with 7,000 people that were all about one author. It, you know, I I don't know how he did not grasp the gravitas of that. I mean, I could probably organize a convention of about 10 or 12 people to come, you know, see me. <laughs> um, you know, I think a, a critique of Sanderson's writing was maybe the most acceptable part of the whole critique of this article. I mean, you know, it, it, it's it's not for everybody. Um, you know, I think there are times where I have tried to and I was like, all right, we can we can swim this down a little bit, you know. Um it's just it's just a matter of, of style and I think that he has every right to not be a fan of, of the writing. So I, I think I'll maybe give him like a... Oh, well, sure. A what about the work ethic? What about the fans? Yeah, it was the I person. Mean, this guy's also a writer. So... <coughs> go ahead, Mark. I'll go then. <laughs> this, guy, this guy is also a writer. And, you know, again, I mean, I, I'm, I guess I'm trying to be as fair as possible and say, you know, um, if he is also a writer and also has a process that's different than Sanderson and thinks it's not a good process... I don't know. I mean, I guess he has a right to say that. I'm not, you know, I, I, I'm not going to totally say that, that uh, I'm not going to totally demonize the journalist. I think that he can, he has every right to have, you know, a differing opinion than Sanderson on, on various things. Well, uh, so I will, I will respond and say, I think that you can, you can ding uh, Sanderson as being a fairly plain writer, a fairly straightforward writer. Uh, I don't necessarily think that he has a lot of the passages uh, that I have read where I go, oh, I need to read that paragraph again. That was beautiful. Right. Uh, he's that kind of writer. But most writers aren't. Uh, and there is something called story that in some ways matters more than the the, the sentences that construct the, the story. You know, and, and that's the thing that really 
uh, people imagine in their heads when they're when they're reading. And I think he has that. But that essence of story was never mentioned. It was just, I didn't like this paragraph or or look at this terrible sentence. It was a little bit, um, uh, you know, there's a difference between critiquing someone's writing and like making fun of their writing, right? And I think that that's, he was definitely doing more of the latter, which I don't support. Um, so, you know, the, the underlying opinion that he had about Sanderson is is valid and okay. The the delivery and execution, I think, is what maybe the three of us are, are probably the most uh, critical of. Yeah, that's probably fair. Uh, what I thought I saw was a master class in A, how not to write in an interview, and B, how to show all of your prejudices instead of... Um, you know any of the benefits or 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 you know things about the 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 subject of you know that, that you're interviewing i think he showed more, more of his own preconceptions yeah i mean stuff. look if the guy had written something this scathing but then took a little time to say like you know i reflected about what i could be missing or I reflected about you know what um, what part of humanity am I really not in touch? Um, a little more room for saying, hey, maybe I'm wrong, you guys. Like, you know, I, I really don't get it. I really, really don't get it. But maybe I am missing something. Um, if you took a, a stronger angle in that direction or took the, took the article in that direction more strongly, I think it would be a much more acceptable um, article. Well, Sure, and if it had been more fair and balanced, and, and, to, and you know, his writing isn't for me, but yet I can see the attraction for his legion of fans, et cetera, et cetera. Right. I I could see something, but this was very unbalanced and right. very, very opinionated, with without giving you any real insights into Sanderson himself, mm -hmm. and that that was very odd to me. You interviewed a guy, but you didn't actually. Give us insights into him. Yeah, and just like the he little stuff, like himself. like he makes fun of how he dresses. Yeah, it's just silly. Yeah. You know, it's like who does that? Yeah, so I, I think bottom line, it was not a good interview. <laughs> Well, I think you're right, Shay. We are talking about it. You know, we are That's talking true. about it. So we are talking about it. It's uh, got a lot of clicks. On the other hand, I haven't. Seen, on the other hand, I have not subscribed to Wired, and I certainly don't plan to. So yeah. maybe it's backfiring on the master. Well, let's talk about Sanderson's response for a little bit. Yeah, very classy. Very. Uh, um, very um, well done, and I liked it. Just as the article <laughs> yeah. made the interviewer look like shit, the response made Sanderson look like a humble, um, decent human being. Yeah, I, I liked that he was, um, you know, it was definitely a turn the other cheek type um, response, you know, um, almost defending the journalist, you know, calling for her people to not harass him, you know, make sure that we're being respectful. So that was awesome. But then also turning it towards the audience and saying, I know this was not really about me. This was kind of a jab at you. Um, and that's, that's the part that, you know, upsets me and that I want you to know that you're valid, your tastes are valid, you know? Um, so, you know, that's great. And I, I would, I would hope that um, if I'm ever in a similar situation, I would see that opportunity and use that opportunity to be, uh, to be graceful. I guess the thing that burns me up on Sanderson's behalf is you'd think that uh, as an author that you have arrived, you know, some major publication, and it doesn't matter whether it's Wired or the, the New York Times or or somebody else, they interview you and it feels like it should be like a credential, like you can link to it on your website. I got interviewed by Wired. And this is the interview? If I was Sanderson, I would never, I would never link to this. This, is a, this wasn't a credential. It's a hatchet job. So the first major publication to like interview him forks it up. Yep. Not impressed. <laughs> on, so, on that note, final words. 
<laughs> final notes? That's, that's yeah, the, the in the response. news feature for the week. That is our in the news feature for the week. Um, I guess just be mindful of how you use your voice. And as you can see, we're put we're pissed off on Brandon Sanderson's behalf because we did not appreciate the interview. And you don't even be a I don't even think you have to buy hard Brandon Sanderson fan to think that he got done wrong. Yep. Writing news, we will we will tackle it. All right. That's it for today. Bye, everybody. We'll see you guys next week. Chowder.